Hello dear students myself Neha and today we are going to discuss proteomics and its type the topic of chapter 3rd class 12th biotechnology as the name proteomics so you should firstly understand what is a proteomic similarly as that of the word genomics Proteomics relate to the proteins. It involves the study of proteins, the structure, physiological role or the functions. This term was firstly given in the year 1997 and it is actually a combination of protein and genome. As in genome, we study the gene of an organism similarly in proteomics we deal with the whole protein content of an organism the term was coined by mark wilkin proteome was given by mark wilkin in 1994 while the proteomics was given in the year 1997 so we can say that proteome is the entire set of the proteins. Jitna bhi ek organism ke andar protein produce hota hai, kisi bhi cell mein kisi bhi time par, that all constitute the proteome of that particular organism. And proteomics is its study. So, proteomics involve all the analysis of that protein and especially referring to the pure uh, protein purification and mass spectrometry. Actually in the proteomics we deal with all the proteins of an organism. So we deal with its location. The particular protein is produced at which particular site. The various modifications it goes under. The amount that is abundance it is produced in the activity of that particular protein or the various interactions involved with that particular protein to all other proteins and as we have said that in the proteomics we also find out the locations of the protein and the abundance means how much protein is produced so we can say that the level of any protein which is present in the particular cell at a given time is controlled by few factors and they are as follows rate of transcription of the particular gene if the particular gene is transcripted fast the amount of that particular protein will be higher the efficiency of that uh, translation of that particular gene which is converted into mRNA and now this mRNA is converted into protein by the process of translation. As we have know that, uh, we have already studied that gene is converted into mRNA by the process of transcription and this mRNA is converted into protein by the process of translation. So both these processes determine the level of protein. And third is the rate of degradation of protein. वहाँ पर कितने proteases या other degrading factors present हैं. Proteome of a cell is dynamic. Means it is not constant. ये हर cell का variable होता है. हर time differ करता है. जबकि जो जीनोम होता है वो एक ऑर्गेनिज्म का कांस्टेंट होता है लेट्स सी विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन एग्जांपल। वी से दैट ऑल द सेल्स ऑफ आ बॉडी हैव सेम जेनेटिक कंपोजिशन, मींस द जीन्स आर प्रेजेंट इन ईच एंड एवरी सेल ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म। बट each and every protein is not produced in every cell. Gene हमारा हर cell में present है, but every cell is not produce the same kind of the proteins. 
Moreover, the same cell is not producing the same kind of the proteins every time. Let's see an example. Hamara ek cell hai isolates of Langerhans or we can say pancreatic cell hai, that will produce his insulin while our neuron will produce acetylcholine acetylcholinesterase which is a brain enzyme. So the gene of acetylcholine acetylcholinesterase is present in the pancreatic cell also but that is not active at that particular site. So we can say that the genome is constant while the proteome is not constant it is dynamic. Let's see one another example. If we consume carbohydrate the production of insulin from the pancreatic cell is more as compared to the condition when the carbohydrate is not present means the sugar is not present. So, the insulin will be produced in the less amount. Therefore, again we can say proteome varies while the genome is constant. Number of genes is also not same as that of the number of proteins. Or we can say vice versa, that is more better. Number of proteins is not similar or non-linear to the number of genes because in a human body average number of genes determined is as 25 to 30,000 while the number of protein is approximately 90,000. So we can say that a single gene can produce various types of the proteins and this can be easily cleared with the help of this flow chart. As DNA is responsible to form the pre-mRNA with the help of the transcription. This pre-mRNA undergoes various post-transcriptional modification as splicing or capping or tailing to form the mature RNA and this mature RNA will form protein by the process of translation and this primary protein will form the functional protein, active protein uh, after undergoing various post translational modifications. Means the protein we have produced when it is active, there are many modifications in it. modifications hui hai. Kis ki modifications hui hai? Let's see. The various modifications as folding, the arrangement of the protein ke structure ka hydroxylation carboxylation glycosylation phosphorylation cleavage of peptide bonds uh, the meaning of few words are as follows glycosylation means addition of glucose moiety or we can say carbohydrate group koi bhi carbohydrate ka uh, group glucose ka structure jab add hota hai that is glycosylation Phosphorus ka koi uh, structure, koi moiety add ho rie, then it is phosphorylation. Maybe a protein is functional after uh, cleaving of peptide bonds. Uh, say we can say that alpha chemotrypsinogen is produced in its uh, inactive form. That is an inactive form of the chemotrypsinogen. Sorry, chemotrypsin means alpha chemotrypsinogen is the inactive form which get activated after cleaving and finally it forms the chemotrypsin. So alpha chemotrypsin is the inactive form. It gets converted into its active form by the cleavage of few peptide bonds and its active form is chemotrypsin. Both are proteins but the functionally active protein is chemotrypsin not the alpha chemotrypsinogen. So in this way approximately a protein undergoes about 200 different types of the modifications and that's why we can say that the number of genes and the number of proteins is not linear. 
now the types of the proteomics broadly the proteomics is categorized into three main types they are functional proteomics structural proteomics and expressional proteomics these are mainly the three branches of the proteomics but in detail we can say that proteomics are classified as proteome mining protein expression post translational modifications functional proteomics structural proteomics protein protein interactions now we should understand the meaning of these words uh, i will explain you the structural functional and expressional proteomics with the help of an example say we have a protein insulin with us when we are determining its structure means when we uh, say that it is having 51 amino acids having two chains a and b chain a chain is smaller it is made up of 21 amino acid b chain is of 30 amino acids a uh, link by the disulfide bonds then it is the part of the structural proteomics means we are getting the structure of that particular protein while we study the function of that insulin we say that this insulin is used to digest the sugar so this is a functional proteomics and what is the expressional proteomics the gene of insulin is present in each and every cell of an organism but it is not produced in each and every cell of the human body so when we are locating the sites at which it is expressing then it is a part of the expressional proteomics next is the proteome mining when we move to the proteome mining mining means extraction isolation and here we are isolating the proteins uh, especially the enzymes for various purposes as drug discovery we are using that protein to identify or to create new drugs post translational modification we have already studied glycosylation phosphorylation proteolysis proteolysis means breakdown of protein next is the protein protein interaction again a important word what is this protein protein interaction and why it is a part of proteomics because we say that in the proteomics we study the whole concept related to that of the protein and how a particular protein is interacted with other protein then it is termed as protein protein interaction jis tarah se hum baat karte hai ki ek enzyme kab secrete hoga ye ek cell ko kaise pata chalega means us cell ke paas कोई सिग्नल कोई रिसेप्ट मॉलिक्यूल ऐसा प्रेजेंट होगा जहां पर उसको मैसेज मिलेगा नाउ दिस प्रोटीन इज टू बी प्रोड्यूस्ड एंड वी नो दैट द एंजाइम्स ऑफ प्रोटीन्स मोस्ट ऑफ द एंजाइम्स एक्सेप्ट वन दैट इज राइबोजाइम द ऑल द स्टडीड प्रोटीन एंजाइम्स आर प्रोटीन्स सो वेन वी आर स्टडिंग how a particular protein is interacting with another protein and giving a particular uh, result then it is a part of the protein protein interaction so this is all about proteomics one word is more mouse knockouts mouse knockouts means we are removing the gene and then studying the effect of that particular gene on that body means on that particular mice removing a gene means removing the particular protein also 
जब हम जीन रिमूव कर रहे हैं तो उससे वो जो प्रोटीन प्रोड्यूस होने वाला है वो भी प्रोड्यूस नहीं होगा और इस तरह से हम उस प्रोटीन को स्टडी कर सकते हैं सो दीज आर ब्रॉड ब्रांड ब्रॉडली कैटेगराइजेशन ऑफ द प्रोटियोमिक्स सब प्रोटियोम मीन्स द सबसेट ऑफ द प्रोटीन दिस इज प्रोटियोमिक्स सिंपल डायग्रामेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन वेन वी स्टार्ट इज द स्ट्रक्चर देन इट इज स्ट्रक्चर वेन वी स्टार्ट इज द इंटरक्शन देन इट इज द फंक्शनल एंड ऑल्सो द प्रोटीन प्रोटीन इंटरक्शन और द एक्सप्रेशनल प्रोटियोमिक्स this is a particular definition structural genomics uh, sorry proteomics expressional proteomics and functional proteomics jab bhi hum expressional proteomics ki baat karte hain to expression mein kya differences hai kis particular condition mein kaun sa protein express ho raha hai structural proteomics when we design or map out the whole structure and the nature of the protein then it is the structural proteomics and when we finalize the function of the proteome or protein analyze its properties in the living structure that is a living cell then it is the functional proteomics so it is all about the proteomics and its types as in accordance with the class 12th biotechnology Thank you. Have a nice day.